Hello and welcome. We have Mike with us. How you doing, Mike? I'm good, thank you, Martin. Hello again. Yeah, we've um, tried this new bit of software. As I said before, uh, it's. Uh, I think I've had that moment where you know when you're trying to get too many things going at once. But um, still, great to see you. Um, we've got quite a few things, really. I suppose to talk about. But I suppose we'll go through the numbers first. Um, numbers are coming down, which is good. Um, I got some numbers here on mm -hmm. uh, trialing this new software. I'm going to see if it floats around the bottom. There we go. Um, we've got a total of deaths in the UK at 42,000. Um, LSB has 436. I don't know if you have anything different on that. I haven't seen LSB specific figures since the last time we spoke. I think yeah. the uh, I got figures for the number of deaths across Bucks. Um, being 244. Okay. Um, that might be in cases then, 430. Uh, yeah, yeah, so the larger number is cases, but I think Aylesbury was having, Aylesbury Vale was having more, a little bit more than what we thought its fair share of cases ought to be population-wise. But um, there may be quite a lot of factors behind that, and uh, I'm not an expert enough to be able to, to tell you what those might be. Well, uh, yeah, that's why we really have the um, the experts, don't we? And they don't always tell us all the information. I did find a a, a website. Oh no, it's not going to come up. There we go. Nothing like being live, is it? Um, mm -hmm. there we go. Add it to the stream. There we go. I found it. This does give um, a breakdown of the actual areas of, um, and this is on the government site. So I can put that. I'll put that in the comments for people. Hmm. Think about this new bit of software, things are a little bit easier to, to do. So I'll just put it there so that if people want to see it, they can. But this is, um, you can actually have a breakdown of the actual area that you're in. Um, let's just change it to Ashen, change it back to Ellsbury. I was having a little play while doing 101 million other things. Um, hmm. And of course, it's going to be a Blue Peter moment, I think. It's just not going to happen. Look at that. It's not doing anything, is it? Um, maybe it's because I'm using a different web browser um, but that, that, those are the cases in Buckinghamshire this is um, on the BBC site it says all that but mm. why doesn't it let me do that that's just unfair isn't it oh well never mind that's one of those things I'm... that looks really interesting though to be able to drill down to that kind of level of detail I'll tell you what was interesting about it was um, the ability to look at different areas, for instance, Quarrenden and Fairfield had the same amount, which was, I think it was about 14. Um, it's a shame that's not working. Um, but certain areas only had one. So it was mm -hmm. trying to look around. I mean, Southcourt, that was it. Southcourt only had one. And I thought being closer to the town centre, it might be... Mm have more really yeah, because of the train coming in and people coming off and you know obviously you merge with people don't you it's, it's a bit like if you're coming up over the big new bridge if, it, if you can class it as new anymore you know people coming off the train there's more chance of it mixing if you, know, mm. if you can see that's an interesting one mm. yeah, but um yeah i found that really interesting but there we go um anything you've heard on the um in the channels that about Ellsbury Vale or anything going on because we've got the shops open now, we've got schools, only for obviously a couple of years. Yeah, I think the full reopening of schools is is pretty much confirmed as being September for the new term, which I think probably makes sense. Um, they're getting to grips with coping with smaller groups and dealing with social distancing and not sharing toilets and all the sort of things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis in schools that you have to suddenly think differently about. Um, but I think um, libraries are re reopening next week, oh. I believe. So people can take their books back that they've had since the beginning of March, and they won't be fine because all oh, the well, have been frozen. <laughs> you that in. Your, your bill is £50,000. What? <laughs> yeah. Well, that'll be a, a way of uh, bailing out the uh, council from its... Uh, Financial deep hole it's in at the moment. It must be that it must actually be in a very deep hole. But that, I think that's the same for every council all over the country, and probably never mind all over the world. But I, I'm that, absolutely right. So 
um, Buckinghamshire has had some extra money from the government, but it's still saying we're spending more than we're getting. So we're dipping into reserves um, to make sure that um, you know, normal services can be continued as much as possible. And all the extra stuff we need to do to supply, provide help to people struggling in this crisis. Um, same with the town council. Um, revenue is down, but costs are pretty much carrying on as, as they always do. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're looking in a bit of a, a financial, you know, it's not as rosy as, as we thought it was going to be a few months back. But, you know, there's a thing we're all going to have to deal with. And the national finances are struggling as well. So um, we, we're going to have to tackle that problem in due course. Um, whether that means tax rises somewhere down the line, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a national politician. I haven't got to grapple with problems like that. Well, I've had no comments from Greg Smith recently. So um, that will be a question when he finally gets into in contact, I suppose, but and that goes for all the other MPs. Um, it, I did send them a, a social message regarding Centivac, so there's a bit of good news there, is that their tests came back on their hamsters, and 97% um, um, it cleared up 97% of the infection, so that that's the pass rate, so it, they're going to go through to human trials now, so interesting, there is a video on um, of course, I created a little video on uh, the FBL YouTube channel that yeah. people can look at, which they are asking for don donations so that they can help um, with the distribution costs and everything that goes in line with creating this drug. And because now it goes on to human trials, they they want to because it's an antibody, it has to be grown basically. So it's going to take a couple of months. So they need to do loads of other things. So if you hmm. have a look at the FBL YouTube um site or channel and uh have a look there i have, i did actually push it out onto um facebook and get banned for 24 hours oh. the cure for covid the 20 minute cure for covid so that got me banned for 24 hours <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very naughty boy very naughty so um yeah it was i'm very sure naughty. i'm sure it got a lot of hits before being banned if people you thought know? it's is this is the conspiracy theory, you know, me in a little bit. It's a bit like, hmm, it, it, it didn't get that much. I've got over 100 people who've watched it. And I've been quite clear in making sure that FBL doesn't, you know, I haven't tried to push my, uh, you know, logos all over it. I've kept it well out because I kind of want this just to go out there to push people to just say, look, this is what's out there. This is an, a, something that's available. Hmm. Go donate. You know, so I, I've been, you know, it's all in there. Um, if you go on the YouTube, I, actually, I'll probably put a link in there later um, for people to actually have a look. But it's, it's strange that the algorithm and everything that works for YouTube hasn't been pushing it out there. It's quite interesting. So um, I don't know. I'll look into that and, and see. But I've done a lot of pushing, tr trying to get a lot of people to, to share it as well. So, um, but going back to finances, I mean, obviously, if this Centre of Acts comes in, it looks like September. I mean, the biggest thing, this is why I'm pushing so much, is it will help governments and obviously people. Um, you will get it for uh, if you're ill or if uh, as a prophylactic. So um, you can have it to prevent catching coronavirus. Mm -hmm. It's the money aspect. And this is why I was saying about funding four million to them. The count, so you're saying the Elsby Town Council is, gonna, is, is dipping into its reserves. And that might mean a cutting of services. Is that is that what you're, or maybe a reduction in services? It's, it's um, at the moment, it's just something we need to keep an eye on. Um, we have reserves to protect us from unexpected factors. Um, we don't like to keep our reserves too high because people say or ask why you're holding on to all that money. That's our money. Yeah. If you it's more yeah. than you're going to need. Um, no, so for, for example, our the Jonathan Page Centre, which is an after-school club, um, has kept open because throughout the crisis, children of key workers have continued going to school. And by having that wraparound care before and after school, it enables those key workers to carry on working, knowing their children are being looked after. 
we have only been able to take smaller numbers, but we've needed to have the full staffing to ensure everything's safe and clean and um, just working as it should be. So the revenue coming in is less, but the costs are the same. Yeah. But we are providing a vital service that helps the town keep going, help those key workers that we all depend on. So you wouldn't say because of the finances, we're not going to do that. Some things are more important. They are. So yeah. it, it kind of depends on how long things go on, what sort of how gradual the move back to normality is. Um, and hopefully in a few months, we'll once again be balancing the books and get things back on an even keel. Or maybe a big, massive um, funding from the government, because there's a lot of, I think, once we come out of obviously lockdown properly, there is going to be a lot of um, people obviously, um, you know, are going to lose their job. Mm. So that, that's the balancing aspect that you're referring to, aren't you? Obviously, the way the economy works is people go to work, they pay their taxes, and that taxes gets distributed to obviously the government and then down to councils. So if there's less coming in, then obviously you're going to receive less. But you yeah. still got your cost. Yeah. A downward out. spiral rather than an upward spiral. Um, but I think you know the government has, has certainly put its money where its mouth is so far in terms of the job retention scheme and the money that has gone to the larger council. So Buckinghamshire has had millions of pounds extra funding. Um, Aylesbury Town Council has had nothing. Our level of council was not eligible for direct government help. I think one of the ministers said at one stage that um, the, the larger councils should pass a percentage of that extra funding on to towns and parishes like ourselves, but Buckinghamshire said oh. no. <laughs> they said we're, we're out of pocket even with this extra money, so we can't spare any. Okay. So, Maybe a valid argument there, but um, we, we've got to sort our own finances out. So it sounds like there's a little bit of um, uh, digging around trying to get money and being refused it. A bit like FBL, and, and, and there is loads of company directors that are in the same position as the Ellsbury Town Council. If that, mm -hmm. so that's why we get on so well. That's what it is. We're actually two peas in a pod. You're more on the uh, public sector or the private sector, mm. but. Uh, it's interesting that there's there is holes, for instance, in all those financial packages the government are giving, and you know, owner directors are definitely the people who are who are at a, who are short really financially because you're classed as self-employed when they want you to be, but you're classed as employed when they want you to be as mm. well. It's you're an accountant, so I think you probably understand that. A hell of a lot better than I will, but it's a bit like depending on you know who you're talking to, you're this and then you're that. So, well, can I do this? No, I can't do that. I mean, when I speak to my accountant, he he goes, well, you could do this. It's like, well, yeah, I could, but then there's that, and he goes, yeah, good point. <laughs> it's you know like furloughing. You you can't work. You literally mm. can't do anything. And if I, well, you can't I, work for your own employer. You can, I think you can work for some, you can certainly volunteer. And I think yes. you might be able to do paid work for someone else, but not your own, not the employer that's collecting the furlough payments. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, uh, it's a grey area, bit of a minefield. Um, I think the rules had to be put together in a bit of a hurry. Mm -hmm. They initially thought of employed people in the furlough scheme, then they bolted on something for the self-employed. But as you say, those that are in the grey area in the middle, still nothing really satisfactory for them, is there? There's nothing. There is nothing. And the comms out there on it is totally dissatisfied. Yeah. But but satisfied that everybody else has been looked after. It's not like, oh, look at me, poor old me. It's a bit like, you know, just think of us. We're the people trying to create jobs out there. And you mm -hmm. kind of like just left us dangling and, and, and thrown us to the side which obviously having this chat we know in about a week and a half the government will put it on their press conference so let's hope that happens <laughs> um big thing i mean we'll, we'll move off the financial aspects well maybe not actually talking about 
sorry, I'm just looking at my notes on the side here. And um, I do want to go over about Black Lives Matter because last week you had a you had a meeting. So I'm really conscious about obviously your time and, and the way you, you free it up to to us at FBL. Um, so I it wasn't I cut it short. It was a bit like that. Mm. that yeah. I would like to 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 chat about that just very very briefly. I mean, from what you talked about a couple of weeks ago. Um, do you want to add to what you were saying? So I think when we last spoke, had the protest in Aylesbury and other areas just happened, just started to happen, or was it in planning? That it had happened, I think. Yeah. They walked past your road, you said, and we were thinking of joining. Yes, that's right, yeah. So, uh, so I saw it was you know quite a big event, um, not socially distanced, although I think they were trying, but it just one of those things that very hard to keep completely under control. Um, and they've continued happening in other places since. Um, I think this is a it's a movement that isn't going to go away, and rightly so, because you know it's a problem that's been swept under the carpet or not properly addressed. And uh, it's time there was some some real high level solid commitment to saying. You know this this situation where there is discrimination or unequal treatment within institutions, not just in America but in this country as well. You know, all of us need to be part of the solution. Otherwise, we're part of the problem, I suppose, or we let the problem drift on without being addressed. Yeah, it's. I mean, all lives matter, you know, and no, no minority or any, you know, hmm. whether it's colour, religion or anything should ever be discriminated against. It should be, you know, I believe everybody's equal. And um, it's like the pay gap it, for women, for instance, that's another big thing. Um, I mean, this all escalated from America, obviously the way the police have been handling it and, and it has stretched out obviously across the world. Bit like coronavirus basically um mm. it is a weird one it is that you know it, it takes someone to die before action can be you know taken and, and and there is lobbyists there's people out there trying to obviously make things equal and and make them fair so it's for you as a mayor how does how do you feel in regards to i mean i mean there were I mean, you must be proud that, that no, no damage was done in Aylesbury, so everybody was respectful. Um, there were some incidents in, in I think it was uh, up north and obviously in London where statues were pulled down and desecrated, yeah. which I think that's a... Bristol as well with Edward yeah. Colston's statue coming down and being dumped in the harbour. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen the, the footage of that. Yeah, it, it's... It's interesting. I've got to be careful what I say sometimes because it's a bit like I don't think that gives it a positive view when people see things like that happening. It's, you know, people marching, people giving their right to march and obviously demonstrate, which they should always be allowed to do, even though in, in, we're, we're in this crisis with this virus at the moment. I think that kind of let the side down, so to speak, when, when we see that, even though I know why they've done it. Yeah, um, as you say, it's it sort of changes people's perception of what's going on there. Although, in all cases, it was you know, it was a minority of people, very small minority. Similarly, in America, there were some people who took the advantage of the situation for looting and other yeah. violence. Um, and I think, yeah, there, there's. There's nothing to say that is justifiable, but some people will take that as a reason to say, because these incidents happened, you've lost the right for your protest to be taken seriously or credibly. And actually, that's an insult to the, the vast majority who go along to peacefully protest and make protest and make a point. So, you know, I'm not glossing over the violence and the unpleasantness, but uh, it uh, it's still the the underlying issue 
still needs to be taken seriously because that is, you know, that's that's equally a crime and it's one that's been going on for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah, but I'm well, really, I'm really proud of Aylesbury that it was a, you know, it was a big protest. It was, it was noisy and vocal, but it was entirely peaceful. Yeah, and hats off, hats off to that. that that's, I, I mean, when I heard, that, I was like, that's brilliant. I mean, I have been asked, you know, you're not doing, you're not covering much about it. For instance, me turning up and being at the demonstration, it, you know, and it's a bit like, well, actually, there's quite a lot involved in, obviously, doing that. And uh, when FBL gets bigger, we will cover things like that. But mm. I've been concentrating more on the centre vax thing because um, ethnic minorities seem to be affected mainly by, obviously, coronavirus. So, you know, for me, that that is where you know, concentrating on that. It's another way of making a difference. Yeah. Valid. yeah. It, again, an interesting one there is, you know, it's really weird. We're dealing with this virus, yet they're having a demonstration. And it's that, you know, I mean, it's that minority or or ethnic background that are... It's those are, most at risk, putting yeah. themselves more at risk, which in a way shows how, you know, how strongly they feel about mm. it. It's a good point, actually. No, for it that way. Yeah, that it's. They don't care whatever. It's like we we need to demonstrate, and we will. So, okay. Um, moving on. Um, Els Ellsbury um, has been well. Actually, Bucks has been given some sad news that Mix ninety six is closing down. And you asked well, me, to put on the. On is the, it closing down? I don't not know. If I, not if I have anything to do with it. Ah, there, yeah. there is a campaign. Um, so my, my colleague, uh, Councillor Richard Lloyd, leader of the town council, um, what has been hugely involved in that campaign, which also involves hundreds, in fact, thousands of members of the public out there. There's a really strong feeling about Mix 96 being part of the town's identity. It's not just a music station that has a bit of local news and traffic news. They support so many town council events and other events throughout the year. Uh, they give politicians like me a platform when we really need to raise a point about something that's going on in the town. You know, we can go to the local studios and do an interview. Um, and they, they, they really are part of our community. So, They've been sold to a company called Bauer Media, okay. along with about 30 other radio stations up and down the country. Right. And Bauer's plan, <coughs> excuse me, is to um, basically have one sort of national brand, greatest hits radio, right. playing all the same music, broadcast from London with... A, an occasional local news bulletin and the traffic news being geared to the local area. Um, we think that um, <clears throat> Mix 96 is so much more a part of Aylesbury than just what's going on down the A41 or the A418. Um, so we really want to keep it in its current form or as close to that as we can. You know, it's been part of the town since 1994. So, so really there's a petition. I think wow. cool. I think it was round about certainly the nineties, um, right. and um, yeah, we we've heard a lot of stories from people who've um, who've had their events supported, good causes they're raising money for, um, all kinds of things, and they they turn up to events and help to promote them. Our um, annual live in the park concert they sponsor the second stage um which gives yeah. up and coming local acts a chance to perform on a big stage in front of thousands of people so it's it's really great what they do so we launched a petition okay nearly three thousand people have already signed okay. um we've got posters going up in windows save mix 96 um the today uh, myself and Councillor Richard Lloyd wrote a letter to Bauer Media and we've sent it to our local MP, Rob Butler, and also to Ofcom. 
um, setting out all the reasons why Mix 96 is different and unique to this area, and we want it kept that way. Well, yeah. I mean, for me, um, the way I want to build FBL Broadcasting is to take on a radio station because I used to be a director of the student radio station when I was at uni. Um, okay. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, FBL is not in that financial bucket yet to be able to <laughs> – these things seem to be happening too soon, unfortunately, for me. But, yeah, to me, radio is, is a – especially local radio. Um, I used to work on Mercury FM. Mm. Um, St Albans I used to work there as um, part time while I was working for Nationwide Building Society after I left uni um, and they amalgamated I forget what group it was but they moved to Watford and you know mm. people again did ask and did say like we're losing our our radio station and I you know as much as you might write the names on the petition it's, it all comes down to money and it all comes down to the way they want to work and how they, you know, how they get their listeners. So, yeah, I mean, they do work to a national formula, but interestingly, there's a couple of stations under their umbrella. Okay. Pirate Radio in Cornwall and one in Lincolnshire, I think, where after really strong local campaigns, they've been allowed to keep a lot more of their local identity. Right. So I don't think we, well, we can't reverse the sale. I don't think 3,000 local people, however willing, are going to have the money to buy, a, buy back and run a radio station. So we are appealing to them and we're going to meet with them or we want to meet with them, okay. talk face to face or over a video link if it has to be, yeah. um, to say, these are the reasons why you need to think differently about Mix 96 and keep it in its current form. Do you know the um, best way to deal with scenarios like this is for the people to actually own their own radio station? So uh, radio stations, I mean, the equipment's the most expensive thing, um, mm. obviously the license as well. Um, and that's why, for instance, you know, I want to, stretch my media empire as they say fbl broadcast into radio as well because live streaming for instance live in the park and prompts mm -hmm. in the park and you know I like to give people the visual but also you know people are driving they're doing you know um going about their day and they don't always want to be watching especially if they're in the garden and it's a way of obviously pushing content out as well from a, a media point of view but um mm. yeah it, it's usually that I mean, unless they get some kind of um, money, I don't think that they probably will turn around and say you can keep the identity. But again, you know, I could we'll be talking say, about them. Yeah. There's one thing. There's one thing you can say about Aylesbury Town Council. You know, we we if the if the fight is a difficult one, it doesn't stop us fighting it. I I, I can agree. I, I I mean, I've been talking to Ruth about we, what's that thing that um, John F. Kennedy said? We choose to go to the moon. Not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not quite on the same scale, but uh, we know it's going to be a battle, but we're going to fight it to the last. And who knows, if, if it turns out that one day we end up with Aylesbury People's Radio, there might be a job for you in it. Oh, really? Oh, oh well, well, there you go. Um, I've got my own brand. We might be in competition, you know, FBL Radio and... Mm -hmm. Ellsbury Town, but again, you know, if I can help in any way, I will, because a radio set, a, a lot of people obviously listen to Mix 96, and it is a shame that, you know, they are closing down the brand, and it, it all just got really, the, um, oh, what are the, the figure, the listening figures? Is it 42,000? JDAR or something? Um, you know, it's, it's got really good reach in the area, yeah. Um, but it's not, it's not, I know it's about the money and it's about the numbers, but so many people have told us in response to this campaign during the lockdown, they've listened to the radio, they've listened to Mix 96, and they've found out about what's going on locally, what groups are available to help, um, and all the good things that are going on. And that's where local radio really comes into its own. When you've got a difficult situation, it helps everyone pull together. Oh, somebody's at the door. Hopefully my um, son will get that. Um, 
it's yeah i mean local radio again i worked in the radio as a student and then obviously after i um you know left uni and it it can help so much it it's the way you can obviously send out reporters as well it's, it's quite cool because they can report on whatever issues hmm. um, oh, somebody knocking on the door with a visor on interesting i'm um, sorry about that um but yeah it's if there's anything i can do to help let me know and uh, as much as thank you we well, if you put, put a link to the petition and the facebook group if anyone out there wants to help mm -hmm. us and get involved that'd be great where's the link where where, where where do we need to go to get this link and sign the petition i will find it and send <laughs> it to you i don't know if we can do it live no is it on the Elsby Town Council or is it? It's not. I'm just saying if I can. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll just can I it. copy a link into this chat? This is going oh, to be very challenging. I don't know if that's the private chat or that's the whole chat. But private. I think private chat is illuminated. If I send it to you, the, see if you can do something with that. Oh, yeah, look. It's, it's popped up. There we go. So I it's see. a sign me petition. Is there any way? I mean, getting used to this uh, new software. There we go. There we go. It's out there. There we go. Signme.org.uk 1661. That's it. Cool. Excellent. But um, hmm. yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see if, if you can do anything. But as always, if, if you, I always think of the contingency theory. Which is if they're not willing. I mean, was Mix Night Six making money? That's the question. And if it was making money, why are they getting rid of it? Um, is it because it's not producing them enough profit? Which is one of the biggest things I, I would expect from a, a company mm -hmm. point of view. Um, which then makes you think, well, okay, if you looked at the figures and you looked at, for instance, it was making a profit, but not a huge amount, would it? Be a, you know, would it be viable to run it as a local community sort of radio? But then it also brings you the thing: who you're going to bring in to look after it, and how you're going to do that? Because somebody has to be the program controller, somebody has to be the director. It does take a lot of work. I mean, trying to deal with all those students many years ago when they were all <laughs> bugging me to be a, a a DJ was quite funny because I was also a DJ. So um, I understand. I also understand it. This is another reason for FBL. You know, people want to come and um, help out at FBL. We're always willing to accept help. We always like that, especially when like live in the park events as well. That that's really draining. I mean, that's all the way from Friday through to Monday we work that one. Mm -hmm. But um, it's. I mean, I spoke to a couple of universities in the area. Um, certain um, Bucks um, business matters meetings, and it's about helping youngsters and, and people of all ages actually get into the media industry because there is loads of jobs out there you can go all over the world and a local radio station a bit like Stoke Mandeville radio as well that's another place if you want to start you can start at hospital radio that's definitely a nice place to start as well um mm. but I gotta admit you know it, it seems like we're losing that little bit of stepping stone into the media sort of realm by losing mix 96 which is a shame so you've gained FBL, but you've lost Mix ninety six. I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe there's room for both. We'll see. There is room for both. There is. We'll see how our campaign pans out. It's only been going a couple of weeks, and it's got a lot of momentum behind it at the moment. Yeah. So, uh, as I say, we won't give up the fight very easily. And you know we're what? Fighting tough battles here. Yes, I think it's an. We, we, we've had some um, Ellsbury battles before, um, going back in in the olden days of the royals, <laughs> be the peasants. So I think Ellsbury's used to that battle, and um, I do think. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you're going to let it go easily. I know that much from working with you guys and and gals, and just. Mm. I think it's just naturally in the blood. To be fair, and. Um, it will be interesting to watch. But again, if we can help at FBL, we will. So I'm sure you'll let us know. Uh, Thank you. Anything else you would like to cover off that's been in the press or anything that's niggling at you 
Honorary Mayor Mike Smith? No. Okay, can I finish with some good news? Oh. So that. back to Youth Concern, my charity of the year. Oh, yes. So um, two things. They've been running a virtual counselling and advice centre for young people while their premises have been closed. Um, they are now talking about the possibility of opening their doors once again in the oh. next few weeks, which is great. And the other good news is that um, I was able to um, announce the amount of money that uh, my mayoral fundraising had made in the year. So although Sorry. the mayoral year is from May to May, my mayoralty is carrying on, <laughs> but obviously fundraising isn't really happening to any extent at the moment. So um, we really had 10 and a bit months. Okay. Uh, and when we added up all the money, um, it was 19 and a half thousand pounds, Ooh. which is absolutely, it's actually the well done. best mayoral appeal that we've achieved. So that's, 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 that's I'm not claiming credit for that because it's the generous people out there that have put money in buckets and yeah. given donations and supported all the events that we have run to raise money for that cause. So uh, they and I are really grateful for the, the support that we've had. So just under 20,000. Wow, that, 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 that's amazing. Is that the most you've had so far year on year on all the charities that you raised for? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's tended to grow a little bit year on year. I, I, I'm never told how much we're raising until we get to the end of the year. So in my head, I was thinking, oh, it'd be nice to be over 10 or even 15. Hmm. So when the, the big check was unrolled for me to hold up in the photograph, that was the first time I'd seen the figure. Hey, um, hang on. Have yeah. I got to look on the Ellsbury Town Council website. i got to see this. Town <laughs> Council. You can probably hear my keyboard now. Just frantically typing away as I... Um, Let's have a look. We'll bring it up. At, uh, Is it there? I don't know. It's loading. It's loading. Oh, scroll down. Oh, we down here. Should be. In, is it in the? Um, Is it down here? News? It's definitely on the Mayor of Aylesbury's Facebook page. You can get that. The Facebook page, okay. Um, oh, you want to bring up Facebook? That's going to be interesting here. Right, uh, Ellsbury Mayor. Facebook. Drum roll, there we there go. Here we found you. Found you. There's yeah. me with the robes and the and the and the check. There, oh, I can't zoom in. That's that's. Nineteen thousand four hundred and three pounds something. Thirty nine p. Hey, you look very happy there, man. Look very happy. I'm I was absolutely thrilled. I was yeah, absolutely well, thrilled with that. Does this mean that, for instance, as you're still continuing on, are you still adding to that amount? Yes, we are, or we we hope to be. So, a couple of events that uh, had to be cancelled in March and April. We hope they can happen later in the year. Um, we don't yet know if Live in the Park can happen on August Bank Holiday. Right. As I said, we're going to make a, have to make a final decision on that by the end of the month. I'm, I'm feeling a bit gloomy about that one, to be honest, with everything else that's going on around. Again, um, I did mention Sense of Acts was coming in back end of August, and I don't think it'll be in time. <laughs> I thought they might be able to pull it in a little bit more, but I don't think they, they're, they're really stringent. Uh, on well, their, um, every, everyone gets a jab as they're walking into Vale Park yeah, and they, they can don't. enjoy themselves. Again, this thing about centre of action, you don't need a jab unless you catch it. So unless you want to prophylactic, take it before, which obviously protects you. That's why I've been pushing so hard with it and sometimes not getting that far, unfortunately. But um, it's interesting it's done that. There we go, that's better. Um, so I've got to get used to new software. But yeah, that, that's that's why I was hoping that with a lot of donations, for instance, they would be able to push this forward and 
and get it out there and nobody would have to worry anymore and it goes back to that scenario of the you know black lives matter as well as pushing you know to me that's more important to to help and speak to jacob glanville and, and the team there and jan from apex um network you know because he's been helping them and pushing it out there and trying to get the word out it's just a shame it's just not getting out there it's just unbelievable but and for live in the park it would be like yeah look it's sorted look it's all there we can all go out and party and enjoy ourselves but never mind it's i am sure the Elsbury town council will make the, the right decision whether it's you know whether we, we, we like it or not it's it's protecting people that's the most you important have to do thing. the right thing for the public and not go against government advice and that is changing day by day, by day. and we have seen things easing so there's still an outside chance that we might be able to do it in some shape or form but uh, if it has to be in a drastically different form to what we're used to then um, we may have to reconsider yeah but we'll see uh, as much as it pains me that it doesn't go ahead again it's i mean it can go ahead in one respect with nobody there <laughs> but and we could live stream it but it's it's not the same you, you need x amount of people this goes back to eng sports um live streaming events i mean they're setting up a league and we're going to start live streaming that league but you still need bums on seats as as we say to create an atmosphere and an atmosphere you you don't get the atmosphere from the camera you get it from the people and the camera can pick up on that without without you knowing that's what attending events and watching things live as much as people go oh surely you just want people just to watch it on the you know on the screen it's like well no actually i like people to turn up to the event because for instance the bands they i mean we're, I mean, we were always purchasing new technology and and um that's <laughs> why we never make a profit <laughs> spend all our money on toys it's like oh i can have this toy I don't have that for now. um so that we can actually focus on the crowd and show like for when the bands want to use it because um i think i stated to them earlier this year i said all bands don't you know i wrote to them all and communicated with the ones who communicated with fbl and said look just so you know you, you have asked before and there, were, there was a charge in everything that we do but actually if you if you take it from whatever then that's fine we won't charge you use it to promote and make yourself better and just make sure you you know um pass on how cool fbl is and um you know obviously if you become big at some point <laughs> then you know we can shoot all your videos <laughs> and make loads more money but um but yeah it's 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 one of those things you you want a load of people there don't you it's even if you did go ahead there would be a reduction in the numbers of people attending before. it would have to be socially distanced to some extent uh, that would make it difficult, more difficult to attract bars and catering outlets and yeah. you know, the other, the children's activities at the back of the field that we've always had that makes it, you know, it feels like a festival because there's so many different things going on and you can wander around and, uh, and just get involved in so many different activities. That's, that's the thing that really makes it what we absolutely yeah. love. So, um, yeah. We'll, we'll see. I'll tell you when I get tired when I'm doing live in the park. So obviously we're there from Friday through to Monday. And the time I get tired is on the Sunday morning, just as we're turning things back on, ready for the church in the park. There's a, the, the, actually, it's just after that, actually. We've gone live, we've done church mm -hmm. in the park, and then we're waiting five hours <laughs> before proms in the park comes on. And we kind of chill, and that's the only mm -hmm. time you feel tired because you actually sit back there's so much that goes on it's just you know i promote it to a lot of people and i do say even people outside of the buckinghamshire area they say to me oh you know what's all that live in the park and i tell them i said it's a great weekend seriously it's a whole weekend of just, yeah. just fun and things for the family to do you know music and it doesn't go on too late it does for us because we got packed down and do our stuff with our tech but i said for for everybody out there i said it's just just brilliant so we shall continue this on in a couple of weeks because okay we've yeah. hit the time limit <laughs> okay. to do. Mike, what's the 
to you again. Yes, as always. And uh, well done on the 19,403.49p. Um, that's amazing. And hopefully um, we'll get you some more money as well with that one. It would be nice to get above 20,000. That would be stunning. I think you might just do it. I, think, I mean, how, how long we how long have you got left? Have they told you how long your term is stretching? We don't, we don't know. Um, it's kind of a bit open ended at the moment. I think when when we get to some form of normality, I think that would be the right time to hand over to a new mayor. Um, could be in the next few months. Could be a bit longer. I think you should do another year, Mike. You've been amazing, especially with all this live interviews i know it takes time out your day and you know and i thank you for that but you've definitely um you know been very accommodating and you seem obviously a very nice guy and we've had a really good laugh and i think we've raised your profile up as well so yeah. we kind of need to build it up as well there you go it's it's gaining momentum you know <laughs> for prime minister at some point <laughs> let's see that okay mike well look, have a good weekend oh you're on holiday aren't you or you're I mean, yeah, I've got my, it's my first bit of time off from my day job in about eight or nine months. Um, not going anywhere. Okay. Just going to spend some time with my partner because that's the new development as well. Oh, the bubbles. Bubbles. We yeah. can get together. I got to see one. Can we, can we have another five minutes of talking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how, how did that – how was it? I mean, because obviously uh, – I've had my bubble as well, but you know, I've gone to see my girlfriend now and our house, houses have amalgamated. So how was it for you? Obviously hearing <laughs> that information. It was absolutely lovely. Thought it might feel a bit strange after three months of not seeing each other, but it seems we still quite like each other and enjoy <laughs> spending the time together. So we're gonna we're gonna try a full week of that now. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Ah, so yeah, so that, so take some time off and and enjoy as well. So that's that's a good idea. I mean, it is as the social distance as hard it is, as it is, you know. Especially if you're in two separate houses, it's 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 a big it's a big thing. And now that you know we've got this ability to do create this bubble, it's it's good. But it would have been nice if the government would have allowed this a lot earlier, mm. and also allowed. Uh, families to meet up before the work scenario started back up i think um and that was much needed yeah but, um, we got their priorities a bit wrong there but never mind now we'll, we'll talk about that next time <laughs> yeah well, look, you, you enjoy your your time off with your partner as well say hi from me will do and um thank you for all your time as well it's been much appreciated and we'll catch up with you in a couple of weeks if that's okay okay martin that's fine cheers all right, give me one second because I'm probably going to do this wrong. I now need to go to our, you know, outro. And I have no idea where I put it. There it is. I found it. Mike, one second. <laughs> have a good weekend. Have a good week, and enjoy some, you know, some time with your your partner. Thank Cheers, you. mate. Thanks. <laughs>